Fat E on the beat. Lagos, the state of aquatic splendor and center of excellence with over 20 million residents, is Nigeria's smallest but most populous state. Historically, Lagos dates back to the earliest times. According to tradition, Ogunfu Minire led a band of Awori migrants to settle first at Isheri, from where they moved to Ebutemeta, later Ido. The Ijebus came through Shagamu and Ijebode to settle at Ikorodu and Ekwe respectively, while the Ogus settled at Badagri. It was these people that first occupied the geographical space now known as Lagos State. Other migrants came to reinforce the presence of the earlier groups. Prominent among these were the Benin that exercised considerable political influence over Lagos. The Tapas with their culture and the slave returnees, especially from Syria alone and Brazil, amongst others. From a confederal system of government, Lagos by early 17th century began the monarchical system with the Addo as the first king. The political system grew so strong to the extent that it was partly responsible for the bombardment of Lagos by the British in 1851 and Sation in 1861. Because the social, economic and political realities effectively supported a well-structured administrative setup, Lagos became the preferred choice as the de facto capital of Nigeria following the amalgamation of the Northern and Southern Protectorates in 1914, a position it retained after independence. Lagos is the most urbanized cosmopolitan in West Africa and has one of the most diversified population in Africa with many cultures, traditions and festivals. It reflects a good mix of tradition and modernization, religion and culture. Eyo or Adamurisha play and the Fanti Carnival are synonymous with Lagos Island. Agiri is identified with the Awoyis Ebi, showcasing different masquerades, boat regattas and Kayu Kayu festivals are common in Ekwe. The Ogus also have the Sangbeto, Sato drummers, Oya and Pajekbulogu, while the Tapas brought Igunuku amongst many others. The cultural diversity of the different groups continue to add value to the state. Lagos, it is the heartbeat of the nation's economic and financial activities. It also has the biggest and pace setting economy in Nigeria and the fifth largest in Africa. The foundation of these achievements were laid during the tenure of the first military governor, Brigadier Mubalaji Johnson, in 1967. Upon creation, Lagos grabbed the opportunity to aggregate all its potentials for a fast and robust development. Lagos State, when we got it, it was a cosmopolitan city. We have it at a stage of development that I feel that we have to develop it further. Subsequent administrations sustain this phenomenal growth through administrative continuity that cuts across military and civilian administrations, policy consistency, strong governmental institutions and structures, as well as a core of workers that are devoted to their call of duty. Across the administrations, Indelible footprints were made in every facet of the state's development. These were expressed in construction and expansion of various trunk roads infrastructure to link various parts of the state. Establishment of grassroots driven healthcare delivery system and the establishment of primary, secondary and tertiary health institutions, including the increase in educational facilities, especially during the tenure of Governor Latif Jakonde, that abolished the school shift system and Ashiwaju Polatinumbu that redefined and re-engineered the state's finances. Economically, it is a fact of history that the economy of Lagos thrives on commerce. The Ijebus to the east and the Ogus to the west established thriving businesses with Lagos Island, trading in clothes, mats and other produce. Lagos also came in contact first with the Portuguese and later the Brazilians. This contact blossomed into a relationship built on trading and commerce. The people displayed their business powers by establishing trading contact with Bahia and had a representative there during the reign of Oba Akinshimoyi in 1704. The commercial activities blossomed across the coastal settlements and led to the construction in Badagri of the oldest story building in Nigeria. 
the growth of Lagos Island as the nucleus of commerce, the development of Ajiri in Ekwe as the nation's first commercial hub, having the first post office in Nigeria, the first inland seaport in Nigeria, and a 300-store capacity market built by the colonialists, as well as the construction of the oldest fuel service station at Yaba. Fired by undying entrepreneurial spirit of the people, Lagos has grown in leaps and bounds to become the economic capital of the nation, boasting of industrial complexes, thousands of commercial concerns, and yes, a free trade zone that is fast becoming the nation's largest industrial hub. In the whole of West Africa, Lagos is number one. It's the best place you bring anything to sell and you sell it. Lagos is now part of Odua Group, following its absorption into the family. If we don't invest, we don't make money. So they too, once they keep investing, people keep looking at what they have and then they will come. So Lagos will be greater as we go with time. If you're going to be in Nigeria, then you've got to be in Lagos as well. Uh, you, could be, you could be headquartered somewhere else, but you need a presence in Lagos. It's not just a Nigerian market, it's an international market. Lagos is home to Nigeria's capital and money markets. It is a maritime city hosting the Apapa and Tinkan ports, the busiest terminals in West Africa. It is the second largest contributor to Nigeria's gross domestic product, GDP, and leading contributor to the non-oil sector. Similarly, Lagos's gross national product, the GNP, triples that of any West African country with an economic size that is the fifth largest in Africa. If it were a country, Lagos is Africa's financial center. We believe that Lagos will thrive as a state. The revenue of Lagos State at birth was three million pounds. It's easier to get many things done in Lagos. Lagos State is blessed with a coastline. We have over 50 kilometers of coastline in Lagos State. That natural endowment that it has makes it indeed a, a, a natural hub for maritime activity. Almost every successful business person, they all started from Lagos. If they had started in some other states, they would definitely blossom in Lagos. So it has to qualify as the state and Lagos itself as a city that nurtures dream and fulfills people's ambition. In addition to the opportunities that abound here, the tolerance, receptive and welcoming nature of the people is one of the major factors responsible for the accelerated expansion of Lagos. You have a listening government and everybody is following improving of what was started by their previous uh, people. The government is always interacting with us. I came into Lagos in 1955 so you can imagine there was one road linking Ikorodu and all the way, you know, and then you bust into uh, Tinubu, to the Tinubu Square. Uh, and now, you, Lagos, you know, Lagos has become a mega modern city. The growth of the state reflects the steady progress that has been made in the last 50 years and beyond. It is a sign of the state's potentials and a greater future already in the making through the emerging eco-Atlantic city. The various development projects being undertaken at Leki, Ekwe and Badagri Axis, as well as the Lagos Megalopolis, extending beyond the northern part of the state into Ogu State. As the state enters another phase of its existence, Lagos faces the future with strong, bold and ambitious steps being demonstrated through the Lagos Smart City Project, an idea conceived to extend the Dubai Knowledge Cluster model to create a network of interconnected, self-sustaining knowledge-based communities that drive knowledge economy. With a burgeoning population, expanding economy and increasing opportunities, everything seems on course for the center of excellence. I want to dream 20 years ahead of my time so that when I go and sleep, people can actually say, you know what, some people saw Lagos of tomorrow. I want to see a Lagos of tomorrow. I want a Lagos where it's the third largest economy in Africa.